Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Kotsin, and I'm Dennis, and today what I'm going to do is show you how to set up an SSH key on Vulture. Of course, this tutorial is concerning Vulture, but this way of setting up SSH key will work with anywhere. It's just I'm using Vulture for this particular tutorial. So go to Vulture.com, and when you get into Vulture, you'll see a plus symbol. And then what I want to do is for you to click the plus symbol and go down to view more options. Click the more option and then you'll come down to add SSH key and click it. And you can tell it bring you to this page and this page consists of a name where you can put anything you want in there to reference this to it. And, and then also this is the field that we're going to put the public key in. And then when we get through, we just click Add SSH Key. In this particular one, I'm just going to name it MacBook Pro 16. And now what I need to do, if you're on uh, Windows, you could go to Putty or whatever they got installed for you. But if you're on Mac like I am, go to Terminal and open a new terminal. And when this is open, this is how you're going to set up an SSH key. SSH hyphen gen, or uh, take it back, key gen. And then, when you get through with that, there's, you can do a, what they call an RSA, or in my case, it's going to be ED25519, and it's a different kind of protocol or SSH key in this ED2519 uh, five five is supposed to be a more secure, better, newer, better encryption than the RSA, and this is the one that's recommended. It's not as widely used. RSA is more widely used, and if you don't type in in front of that, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. If you don't type in the dash T, which means the, this is what I want to be installed then type in ed25519 and that it, it automatically revert to the default rsa so basically i'm telling it the ssh to generate a key and i also want the key to be a ed25519 skip a space and type hyphen capital c and what that does is add a comment, and you can put any comment you want. Basically, it's a string, it's a text message, and it is for your benefit. Now, I'm going to put my email address. The reason I'm putting that is because if you get a GitHub account or anything like that, a lot of times this is how they verify you on their system is the, your email on the SSH keys. And then once I get that entered, I'm going to click Return. And as you can see, it's generating a public-private ED5519 pair key. And then it says, what file do I want this to save in? Of course, I want this to save in my root directory. You can pick any one you want, but most times you just need to leave it like it is and just hit Return. And let me move myself out of the way a little bit. Of course, here's the thing. You could put a passphrase in make it more secure if you like but to me that defeats the purpose of having an ssh key because with an ssh key you do not have to keep entering passcodes every time it automatically do it for you so you have to bypass but if you choose to do that it could be anywhere you want but if you don't like i am just click enter then it's going to ask you to confirm it again or um, click enter again and as you can tell it says you're Identity has been saved, and it's telling me where I'm saving my private key. Of course, here's how it works. Think of it like this. Uh, if you got your remote server, they're the one that's going to be the public key. And the public key is available to any server you're trying to get a hold of or anybody who needs a key authentic identification. Something you may remember. So just... Use, uh, so let's say the public key is a lock. Let's say you give the lock out to multiple uh, servers and stuff like that, but the only way the public servers could be unlocked is through the key, and you hold the key on your local computer. And that is what this user .ssh .id, that is your key to unlock that lock. 
And of course, this at the bottom is your public key. See the dot pub, and that is going to be what the, all the other uh, servers or whatever is using. And it tells me what is generated. So what I'm going to do is copy the top, and I'm going to paste it at the bottom. And I'm going to use the cat command. And what the cat command does is basically prints out what is on my private or my public server and as you can tell it shows me my public server key which is let me get it highlighted again it starts at the SSH as you can tell it tells me the encryption I'm using the ED25519 we don't talk more about that in a different video compared to the RSA but for right now just know this is a more secure or technically a more secure and newer and more recommended kind of encryption and this is big long code is my public key connection encryption and of course ds vortex outlook.com right click copy go back over to your vulture and right click and paste and as you tell it entered it in and i'm gonna put add ssh key and ssh key edit and then you can tell my name of it right here and the date and time it was created and now what we're going to do now is we're going to go back and we're going to spin up a new instance and i'm going to show you that now regardless if you got one instance 20 instance or 30 you could choose to use this particular ssh key on your local computer that you got it on to any of those servers and you never have to enter a passcode so let's go back into uh, add a, a deploy a new server and I'm just just for this I'm just gonna leave it at default Los Angeles I'm gonna go down I'm just gonna let me just pick CentOS stream 9 you can pick any of them you want and for this tutorial I'm gonna pick the basic I'm gonna enable IPv6 and then you could tell at the bottom my key is here now I could choose to uh, go ahead and let it do root, you then the passcode, and then every time you got to enter the root, and the IP address, and the passcode, you got to click, copy, click, copy. It take if you're doing a lot of instance, or do, it takes a lot of time, or it could take. But in this particular one, it's already set up for me, and I'm going to choose the SSH key. And, I'm gonna, and when I click it, you see it check marks, and I'm going to type test as my server label, and click deploy now. Now, as you can tell, uh, once I clicked Add Server, it's server added successfully. Now, it took a few seconds to end up running. As you can tell, here's my IP address. And what we're going to do now is go to our terminal. And I'm going to show you that how easy it is to get into this since we use our SSH key. See, most of the time, if you don't use your SHA key, you got to enter the username root, and then you got to enter, copy and paste the passcode every time. This eliminates, especially if you got a lot of uh, instances or instance set up and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just copy my IP address, and then we're going to SSH root at the IP address that let me see I've done something wrong here hold on there we go and then I paste all right and as you can tell it goes through this particular thing like it always do as if you want to it's a fingerprint do, do you trust this yes or no and yes we trust it and it permanently adds it as you can tell I did not have to add a passcode it did not even ask for a passcode because it automatically used that SSH key, the, uh, the private, and uh, compared it with the, the public, and it just done it up for us. And to do it again for you, to let you see, I'm going to SSH root, if I can spell, at, and I'm going to click again, my IP address, and click enter. Once I click enter, it will not ask me for a passcode because it's using the SSH key to automatically log in and as you could tell I'm already logged in again so this is basically how you could do an SSH key to keep from have to constantly pasting 
and copying passcodes or remembering passcodes and stuff like that. Y'all like, comment, and subscribe.